Well guys, I uh, broke down and bought a power supply. Now, um, why did I buy the power supply? Well, I've got the batteries going. I got the wind, oh, as a matter of fact, I had moved the wind turbine down. Um, it's about three feet off the roof. It gives, well, it's a little bit more than that. It actually gives me about a foot and a half clearance from the blade. Um, but I'll tell you what, as soon as I put it there, uh, the wind was, you know, kind of just breezing through here and it was spinning like crazy. Uh, so I found the right spot for it. Uh, next time we get a little bit of a breeze, I'll show you. Right now there's no breeze, so it would be foolish for me to show it to you now. However, um, I'm running off battery. I'm running off the solar panel to charge the battery as long as the wind turbine. Uh, and, and it works. However, if there's no wind... Um, and it's a real lousy day, dark, gloomy, rainy, whatever. The solar panel just can't keep up with, there goes my train, Matt. Just can't keep up with the usage or the amperage um, from the radio. You know, the HF radio, the ham radio. So you know it just gets to a point where you can't use it so i i needed to have something uh, more stable more permanent um or at least as a backup so i decided to buy the power supply now i still have everything hooked up you know as well what i did was i put a switch on it's a marine switch it's a boat switch um you know uh, for one battery two batteries or all batteries uh, I've got a few of these things laying around, so naturally, you know, I figured I'd use one of them. And on one side where it says two, I had marked that battery. The other side I marked supply, which is number one. I just got to make sure that I do not switch it down to both, because then I will have a problem and possibly blow up the supply. Now, now there it goes the one the other way. Like I said, we get one east, one west three times a day so anyway um, I decided I had to buy a power supply now when it comes to buying power supplies you don't want to if you have money to spend well then you just buy big all right but if you want to stay within reason or within a budget and you're trying to buy something close to what it is that you need uh, well then you have to pay attention because the power supplies are not giving you what they are marked at. Now this one down here is an Astron. Astrons are known as good supplies. These always have been. They've been around when I was in business back in the 60s and 70s uh, and 80s. I mean, so that they've been around as far as I can remember. Let's put it that way. Um, so naturally that would be the first place I go. It's what they call a linear supply, which means it has a transformer in it. It's not a switching power supply. I have two switching power supplies, but I would never trust them to use on any expensive equipment like this because I just don't trust them. You know, when I had my store, uh, yeah, they just didn't take the abuse, you know. Um, they couldn't take... Uh, you know, like a 100% duty cycle. They, they're just not there. That's all there is to it, in my opinion. However, if you're going to put a CB radio on it or something, or you want it for a little test thing for your bench, they're cheap. So you get away with them. But if you want a good supply that's going to last, you want a linear power supply. One that has a transformer in it that weighs a little bit of weight to it. However, as I was saying, hypothetically, let's say you've got a CB radio. You read the book, the radio, the book tells you that that radio is going to draw 4 amps. Now 4 amps meaning that's the most it's going to draw when you're keying the mic and you're talking and you're having a good time with it. It's going to draw 4 amps. So you go and you buy yourself a 4 amp power supply. All right. Well, guess what? That 4 amp power supply that says 4 amps on it as this one says 35, um, it's not a 4 amp power supply. The 4 amps is the surge. When you turn your radio on, it requires a little bit more at first. 
when you key the mic sometimes it'll require that little extra surge before it levels down again so it's the surge it's not the continuous amperage continuous duty so what you do when you buy a power supply you want to buy it so that it's if you need a four amp supply buy it so it's a four amp continuous which means you'd have to buy something like a seven or a 10. A 10 would probably give you six to seven amps continuous. You see what I mean? This one's a 35 amp surge, but in reality, it's only gonna give me about 25 amp. Now they'll all show you 12 volts or 13 volts, whatever it's rated at, voltage is voltage, but it's the amps that you need. You know, the voltage without the amps is nothing. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> you need both. The amps are important. If the radio does not get the amperage it needs, it's going to start to heat up and eventually it's just going to blow on you. So just beware. Like I say, don't go by face value or what it's being advertised at. Read the print and find out what its continuous duty is. If it doesn't say it, well then stay away from it. Buy, look for something that will say it. All right, and that's how it is like I say now this is a 35 amp it's given me about 25 amps maybe 27 amps continuous the radio I use draws uh, takes requires to work properly between 23 and 25 amps so that is borderline and I normally don't run things that close I like 10 amps or so more I like a little extra, you know, I don't want to work my power supply, you know, to the limit. I want it to kind of idle through what I need it to do, if you know what I mean. So that's how I kind of use it. Sorry about that, battery went dead on me. I'm using the Canon right now, the 4IT, 4TI, whatever it is. Anyway, like I was saying, I normally don't run it that close. I like some wiggle room i like it so that when i'm using it at its most when my radio is drawing all it can draw and i am keying up and i am taking all that it can take i like to make sure that my power supply has a lot of extra room i like to see like 10 amps extra a little extra amperage i don't like to work it hard i'd rather have a little bit more so that it can kind of idle through. If I'm working it hard, right to the point, right to the, every time, it's not gonna last as long. Now, these power supplies are expensive. When you buy a, a linear power supply, it's gonna cost you more than a regular switching power supply. Um, this particular power supply is an Astron, and it's a uh, 35M because it's got the meters. Normally it would be a 35A. Um, this one's also veritable power. This one is uh, cost me two hundred and two hundred and nine dollars. This one cost me. Now, if I didn't have the battery backups, and this was going to be the only thing that I was going to rely on, knowing that it gives me twenty-five amps continuous, even though it's only a thirty-five amp power supply. Um, and my radio draws 23 to 25 amps and I have other radios and things going as well but on receive it doesn't draw that much on receive this thing is just kind of like moseying along but when you start transmitting if I hadn't had the battery backups and the solar panels and all that kind of stuff here as a backup system I would have bought a 60 or even 70 amp power supply because a 60 amp power supply would probably give me about 45 amps, 45 to 47 amps. My radio draws 23 to 25, so see what I mean? Now I got a lot of wiggle room. Uh, it, it's not working at its peak. You know, it's not drawing all that it can take. You know, it, it's got room, so it's not going to work quite as hard, so to speak. Um, I may even go uh, up to a 70, you know. Uh, when I first got into amateur radio years ago, I had a 100, 100 amp power supply. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things that's cost factor too, because these are more expensive. But you don't want to buy something that's borderline because you're going to end up blowing it up and wasting your money. 
So think about that, you know, even if it means waiting a little bit longer to get what you need. If your radio draws 10 amps, you better get yourself a 15 or 20 amp power supply. But check what it gives you on continuous duty, all right, not on face value. Face value is 35 on this. Again, that's your surge. Surge is not going to help you, all right. So you want to check and watch what you buy. Anyway, uh, I am going to get ready to go in the house. Uh, the wife did a lot of, um, of my passwords and things for me on an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, I can do it, but she can type, and I'm a hunt and peck. So what she did in an hour would have taken me a day. Uh, but she took care of that for me. She took care of some of my addresses. So, um, but she did it out here in the shop. So I'm going to go inside and, and lay on the couch and go through it to make sure that it's what I think it is and go through it with the papers to make sure that she didn't forget anything and then maybe organize it to the way that I want it other than the way she had put it. So, but um, other than that, that's about it. I will be putting the base of the new tower in the ground probably sometime next week i have to get to uh, uh some type of a metal supply place i gotta pick up some iron i need some good iron um because it's going to be a lift and lay mount so it's going to have a lot of stress on it um i've got to pick up probably 20 bags or so if not more of concrete because I got to fill a 55 gallon drum with it, which is going to be in the ground. Um, I'm going to throw some rebar through it to help hold everything in place so that it can't come out. Uh, so uh, when I start that, I'll kind of do a video on it and give you an idea what I'm doing and what I'm not doing. The actual tower is not going to go up right away, but uh, I can still get the base in the ground and, and let that sit there. You know, if it sits there for two or three weeks, it's not a big deal. You know, uh, basically the longer it sits, the better it is for me. Because I know the concrete will cure and uh, I don't have to worry about it. So, but anyway, that's where I'm at. So I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to go in the house. I got a few things I got to do in there. I'm going to kind of sack out. I didn't have a good night's sleep last night. For some reason, I kept waking up. Uh, and I don't really know why. Um, I don't know if it was the boys or what, but... For some reason, you know, like uh, every 45 minutes I'm awake, you know, so so I'm going to go chill out, lay on the couch, and just chill. All right. So other than that, I'll catch you guys later.